Okay, so hopefully everybody can see my desktop. Um, so this is my Key to My Heart series. Uh, I did a bunch of these for Valentine's Day and sold out uh, really well. Um, so what I'm going to do is sort of go through the steps that I took to create it. Um, this one is on a, um, a stretch canvas, but I'm going to do it on a canvas board today. Uh, so just to deconstruct what it is. So I covered the whole canvas with uh, painted paper, paper that I painted um, and put different designs on, handwriting and sort of um, stamps and whatnot. So I'm going to take you through how I make that paper, how I get it onto the canvas, then the little details that I do, put the heart on. Um, I also attach little steampunk keys. Um, these little guys are really cute. They add a lot of character to the piece. Um, and they come in all different designs and styles. So maybe whoever's on the, the call can um, help me pick one out for this project for today. Um, also, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway. I think I'm gonna start by doing the giveaway. Um, so if you are just in my group, and uh, you've been entered in the giveaway and I have this cool little um, Wheel of Names app and I put everybody's name in this. So all I have to do is um, push it and then it'll give me who, who the winner is. So the person who uh, wins this giveaway is going to win my a Key to My Heart uh, painting. And so this one uh, was one that I had in my series and you're going to win it. So let me start with doing that. I'm excited about <laughs> doing this. Okay, so let's see who wins with that. It used to make a sound effect. I'm going to see if I can figure out how to get that working, but... So I'm going to announce the winner here. Let's see what comes up. Dina F. So Dina, you are the winner of this little key to my heart painting. Um, I will be reaching out to you on the group to get your address so I can ship this to you. And congratulations. So it's excited. Okay, so let's get started on how I create this little painting. It all starts with a little, cool little handed tool that I have called a jelly plate. It's a jelly plate or a jelly press. And it's kind of, mine is kind of gunky. Um, that's just because I've used it so much. But this is a mono printing. If you've ever heard the term mono printing, it's a mono printing tool uh, that I use to um, use to paint paper. Um, and the paper is what I put on the back of the canvas to prep this canvas. So uh, let me show you what I do. This is the paper that I use. It's actually just deli waxed paper. Um, you know, you might get it at a uh, food supply store or restaurant supply store. It's just deli paper. It's similar to tissue paper. Um, and so what I do with that is I actually stamp designs onto it and then that way then I attach it to the canvas. So let me show you how I do that. So I'm starting here with just a little bit of um, brushed metal craft paint. It has to be dark enough to get, um, I might put a little extra gold in it, um, dark enough so that you can actually sort of see the words um, but it definitely has some shimmer and I do it pretty liberally. Um, Oh, the other thing I'm going to do is after I finish making this, we're also going to make a, a Valentine's Day card. So, And what you do is you bray, you get a little brayer, which is essentially just a roller, and you roll the paint out so it's flat um, onto the jelly plate. And what I do, I like to um, use all different kinds of stamps. This one is musical notes. Um, I've got another one that has different musical notes here. I've got um, like type, it's sort of type, like newspaper type, so it sort of could be something that was typed. And then I had this sort of romantic script one too, which I use that one pretty liberally for this project. So essentially what I do is just stamp this pattern on and do it in layers. This is coming out really subtle, which is the effect I want. Um, and 
since the paint is so thin, it dries very um, quickly. Let me just show you how, what it looks like. Uh, the other good thing about this paper is it is easy to lay down onto the canvas. So let me make a few sheets of these um, with different designs. The other thing you can do is when you have designs already on your jelly print, jelly plate, you can add different shapes and you can actually take your paper and pick up some of those designs directly from the, the gel plate. And this will give me more of a solid look. So this is, hopefully you can see the sheen to it. Um, so let me just do a few of these. I'll add a little bit more paint on here. I'm very liberal with it. I know a lot of people who do this are super paranoid to get it ultra thin, but my type of art always has a lot of texture, so I'm not uh, afraid to get texture um, on my pieces. So let's let's do a musical note. Then. Oops. Let's do a musical note. Right there. That looks cool. I love musical notes. I think they're so romantic looking and perfect for this piece. And you can do it in layers. You can add, combine. Um, so if I wanted to do, you know, a little bit of musical notes onto this paper, that's fine. I think it kind of adds because you're not going to be using a full sheet. I just tear strips of it off so you can sort of create a different type of pattern. So these are the background sheets and I did create some yesterday sort of to prepare so that they would be dry and here are some of the ones I did yesterday so just sort of a mix this is the notes this one has the newsprint and some musical notes on it this is more of just the handwriting um, so these will be good. These will help me do the background. So let me start working on the background. So that's just a quick introduction to the gel press. Um, also for these cards, since I've got it going here and I've got some paint on it, um, these cards are going to be really cool. I'm going to use the leftover paint from the heart just to make another matching ca card. Um, but what I like to do to begin these cards is just I like to outline everything. I think outlining makes a big uh, difference. So I don't know if you can see, put another one behind it. You can see how I've got sort of that gold glittery paint on the edge. And I just press it on there and just sort of wave it back and forth just to, so that it will actually show. And so then I have a nice edged card. And I'll let this dry so we can create it later. Um, another thing I think I might like to, this is one I did yesterday, so it's all dry. I think what I might like to do while I have the gel press out is to print some of this romantic looking writing onto the card so it can dry while we're, while we're doing the canvas, the hard canvas. So let me just do that a little. Move this over. And then it'll be a nice background for the card. So I have my daughter Lindsay in the studio. She's sort of hanging out in the background to let me know if there are any questions. So if you guys have any questions, just pop them into the feed and I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Oh, isn't that... Let 
Okay, so I'll let that dry and then we'll go over that later. All right, so let's start with, I'm gonna put this aside for now. Actually, let me take some of that. In case I need to use it later, I wanna take some of this paint off because it'll still be on here. Just clean it up a little bit. This is the way you clean it off. Just put a paper on it and you can see some of the handwriting is still showing through. So that piece of paper can be used for another project or for even for this one. Um, let's get some of this paint off. So what's everybody doing for Valentine's Day? Do people have plans? Making a special dinner or anything like that? Um, Looks like we've got some comments. Good morning. Happy Valentine's, Happy Valentine's Day. Day. Hi, Julie. I see that you're watching. Marcy's a newbie. Hey, Marcy. Hey, Pam. I wonder if Dina's watching, the winner. Uh, if anybody knows Dina, let her know she won the painting. Maybe she has time to tune in. Okay, so let's get started with this. So what I do is I take my tissues, tissue paper, wax paper here, and get some dry ones. I kind of like this one, kind of like that one, like that one, maybe that one. And what I use to attach it is this acrylic gel medium it's matte, so after it dries, you can't really see it. It doesn't shine on there or anything, but it just helps to um, fix it to the substrate. So I buy this stuff by the gallon, as you can see. I'll just put some on a plate. So we don't have to have the whole gallon here. Kind of goopy. Well, this does not add texture, and that's intentional because I want just something that affixes it to the panel without um, without adding any kind of shine because I want that shine to come through with the other stuff that I put on it. But that's a good question, Lindsay. Um, get my brush a little wet. Let's just start start on the sides. I'm not gonna do the back right now, I'll do the back later because it'll stick to my surface here. But just basically take these sheets and tear them. And affix them to the side. A lot of the sheet is gonna be covered up with paint. As you can see on this finished one, see how you can see little bits of it here? In here but I do paint over it so if you're not crazy about the way your paper turns out don't worry just parts of it are going to show and anything you don't like you can cover up but it just adds character it adds a, a layer and I really like adding layers to this project so put the um, I put the gel mat the gel medium on the bottom and the top and then I kind of press hard with this part of the brush just to sort of make it flat and not have any bubbles. Um, one of the reasons I just use small pieces uh, at a time and not just lay the whole thing over is because it would create bubbles um, that I wouldn't really want to have and that could peel off. Um, so this is this is a mixed media piece. A lot of my work is mixed media, um, which just means I don't only use paint. I use paper. I use uh, different objects like the keys. I like to incorporate um, different you know elements to the art. Let's get this here, and I'll cover up that little piece that's 
that's showing. Let me get this whole thing covered. This is cool with the newsprint and the music. And then even just the sides of the 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 um, gel print that that was just off the plate, nothing distinct, adds kind of a cool bit of character there. So nothing I do is super exact or super um, realistic, and that's sort of how I like it. So I'm happy when little mistakes happen or things that aren't perfect because it in the end I think it adds a whole lot of character. I mean this is original art. There's no two pieces alike, um, you know, so these are one of a kind, and I like that about it. Certainly nothing you'd find in Home Goods. Uh, you might find a reproduction there, but you wouldn't actually have the tactile aspect of it. Um, my grungy scissors out here just to trim this off a little bit. Um, I'm getting a question. Are the paintings behind me for sale? Yes, they're for sale. Most of them are on my website. Some of them are not. Um, but if you're interested in anything you see, I'll probably at the end of this video, I'll go to the different scene where you can see everything and let you know. Um, members of this group only get a discount. If you go look in the, well, it used to be called units, but now it's called I forgot what it's called, but there are little d different sections of the group inside Facebook. I've got a free Valentine's Day card in there if you guys want to download that and print it out. If you forgot to make a card or ha buy a card for your Valentine, you can print that out. There's other freebies in there, but there's a section where there's a discount on my original art, and you can, um, you're welcome to download that for anything you might like to purchase. So. so you got any questions for me, Lindsay? Yeah. Okay. What do you got? Um, what do you like most about being an artist? Um, I just like the creativity. I, I think that... Um, being able to sort of figure things out and you know have ideas about the way I'd like things to look. I know my art is not is sort of unconventional um, because of the texture I use. A lot of people don't know about palette knives, you know what how to use these and and what effects you can get with them, all that stuff. So um, I was inspired by my mom. My mom is an artist. She um, painted with palette knives. Uh, when I was growing up and I was always fascinated by um, by what she did and and her art and I just always was inspired by that so um, I would say that that's one of the favorite things I like about about art so so hopefully you can raise this up so you can see how the background is turning out. You can see the printed paper just applies really neatly what to the, the canvas. What are the benefits of using a wooden canvas? Well the good thing about doing the wooden canvas is when you press, I press pretty hard to apply this paper and you know it, it's able to accept that. It's not going to tear the canvas it's not going to make a dent in the canvas. Um, it's a lot sturdier. And that, hel that helps too when you use palette knife as well. I think I wanna fill in this gap here with something. Get a few musical notes going. And see how even just the torn edge, let me, let me make sure you guys can see this. Even if I just lay that torn edge right there and then cover it with this medium, 
it just sort of all blends together like it was one piece. So the fact that I'm doing multiple pieces and can sort of pick and choose doesn't look strange or unfinished or anything like that. It just all sort of melds together. And this will dry pretty quickly. I'm just going to keep moving through it, even though it's not dry. Um, it'll dry pretty quickly, and it, it's okay to, to keep working on it. So that is how I prep the background. Um, so let me work on getting this heart together. So for the heart, if you look at this, let's see if you can see the... It, it sticks out pretty far from the canvas. You can see how it's very thick paint. The texture um, gives it, you know, you really want to touch it. So um, to do that, I need a special kind of uh, heavy body acrylic paint. Um, I use this Utrecht heavy body acrylic. Um, I'm actually a brand ambassador for uh, Blick Art Materials. And if you are interested in seeing other of my videos using these um, materials, you could look at the Blick Art Materials uh, featured artists page. I have my own page where I did a bunch of videos uh, if you want to see more um, of how I use those materials. And I also have product lists and, and other information on that too. So let me get these papers out of the way and start getting my paint together. Um, so I buy this stuff by the gallon and so I don't have to keep opening up the gallons. I uh, put it in um, just Ziploc bags. So I'm going to squirt a little bit. This is my palette. I think you can see it. I use a glass palette um, because it allows me to scrape pretty hard with my uh, knife and um, it's larger than the, the other palettes that I've used in the past and I can work with a lot of paint. This, this piece in particular is pretty simple color so um, I'm not going to be worried about having to put a lot but it's good to have a good um, a good sized. Is that an actual gla glass palette or did you just get a piece of glass? Oh no it's an actual glass palette. Okay. Um, it's it's on my list of recommended products on the Blix, Blix page or if you're interested in um, the exact brand I can look it up for you. Okay so this is the Quinacridone Magenta. It's a gorgeous pink color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this on my palette. Now you'd think that I would mix the two up, but I'm not going to do that. Um, what I'm going to do is pick my palette knife, probably use this one. Well, actually I actually have another one that's smaller. Oh, this one's big. So what I'm going to do is get this quinacridone magenta on the back of my palette knife. Okay, just get a nice little layer there. And then I'm going to scoop some of this up and see how beautiful that looks. And then just start with the one side of my heart and just pull it down and then do the same thing again and this one is actually looking small to me maybe I should use a different let's see if I can add a different stroke to it I like to do this with just you know a couple strokes but this one looks is looking small so I'm just gonna add a little and then between strokes oops I'm gonna let's see if I can get this one in a single stroke a little bit bigger So then I'm just going to pull this down and around, get the size I want. And then 
I just clean it up. Now, as I said earlier, I covered this backs, the back of this with some white paint. You can see how a lot of the background that I put in will be covered up. I think what I want to do is just make this the bottom of the heart just a little bit longer. So I'm going to do that this way. There we go. I use a ton of baby wipes in my art. Let's see if I can do this side too. Um, because I need something that's wet just to sort of grab it all. Okay. So I like that. Here you can see the side, how thick it is. You can see how, and I like the way the white mixes in with the pink and We've got, you know, again, everyone is unique. Everyone's different. Um, so that's pretty simple as far as that. Now I need white paint, but I don't need the ultra textured one. So I'm just using some of my thinner um, acrylic white paint here to um, cover up the other, the rest of the background. So it looks more like this. So hopefully you can see my, oh, I see I've got my hand. This is just regular white paint. This one has a little bit of a pearl to it. So. So why do you do the heart before the background? Because I, if you look at this one, I like to, I think, I feel that everything needs to be a, a, some kind of a shadow or an outline. So I like the background to still be around the heart. If you can see how the background is still around the heart. Um, and then I've got the white sort of in the rest of it. Okay, so that, that thank you for the question. So I'm going to do that now. And see these little gaps that come through? That That's just a function of using a palette knife. It's sort of imperfect. And I like that. I'm not going to try to undo that or fix it. Oops, <laughs> I almost dropped my knife. Just sort of get to the edges. Here. Let me get some a little bit on the sides. You can see. A little bit more on the sides. It's still showing through, but I've just got a little paint there. And I like this, so I'm not going to put a whole lot of paint on that side. I still have quite a bit of the writing and the printing showing through. Same with this. I like this, but I'm still going to, so it looks like a cohesive piece. I'm just going to cover that a little bit. Kathy says, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, Kathy. And she likes your heart collection. Oh, thanks. I'm excited. I really enjoyed doing this. They sold like hotcakes. I'm actually going to be doing these for uh, Middleburg Marketplace. I don't know if any of you have heard of Middleburg Marketplace, but the Middleburg Market is a very well-known art um, fair here in the Washington, D.C. area. And um, they had to go virtual this year, like everybody else. Um, and what they do is they contribute a portion of their proceeds to a bunch of really great local charities. So if you've never heard of Middleburg Marketplace, check them out. 
They, um, it's a great organization, and uh, I have several of my art pieces there, and so when people buy it, some of the money goes to me to cover my supplies, um, and then a good portion of it goes to local charities, so I'm real proud to be part of that organization. Um, but anyway, they ordered a couple of these, so I'm going to be working on those unless these sell. So if you can see, so I'm going to put the heart, I mean, I'm going to put the key on. Um, the key is just pressed into this heavy body paint. So, um, and then I outline it with a little bit of bronze there. So I've got all these keys. Why don't you guys help me pick a key? So I want it to be a certain size. So I'm going to hold these up. So we've got kind of a fancy one here with curls. We've got one that has these, looks like a clover leaf. This one has a crown. I thought I had one with a heart, but it doesn't look like I do. Um, anybody want to help me pick this? Any votes? How many people vote for this one with the curly Q? Um, and then I've got this one with the crown. I kind, I'm kind of leaning toward this one. I don't think I want the crown. So I'm going to lean towards these two as you can see. So if you want A, put a heart, just put A and then a heart. If you want B, put B and a heart. I'll Pam like, and Michaela like the middle one, which was the, um, I guess now you're... The this one. one? Yeah, the one you have closer to the People camera. like this one? Yeah, but Laura likes the crown. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, here's the crown. I guess that can come back into the running. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? Don't Kathy likes A. Which is this one, I mm -hmm. think. Okay. So. I think this one is the winner. Thank you, everyone. So, okay. So this is a pretty decent size. It looks like it's about an inch and a half. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of this on my canvas. I mean, yeah, my... my um, my um what is this called again I'm forgetting here so just put a swipe of that heavy body paint again and then I'm just gonna take the key and drop it on there so I'll show you see how it's sort of nestled in the middle of that paint stroke but you can't really see it yet because it needs a little bit of outlining and the outlining is really important so if you compare these two you can see how this is outlined and this isn't yet and this has a little bit of outline here um, so what I use for that is any of these metallics I really love this it's like a metal patina glaze that, that I think it's used for furniture, but I'm not sure. But you can get, you know, brushed metal, any of these metal paints you can use. This one is a really good treasure gold. Um, I think I might use this one. This one's really very um, strong. So I can do it with my palette knife sometimes I'll do it with this is just a skewer a wooden skewer um, that I just touch the edges you just need kind of a, a hard edge um, so let me just get a little bit of this on there and Just get a little bit, get some of this off. I don't want to get more paint inside my gold. Just get a little bit here, just sort of outline. I just sort of go with the flow on it. So now the key has an outline to it. And I'm going to try to go around the edge a little more. Mm 
Okay. So there is that. Now I'm going to just do the edges. So I feel like what I like to do with these corners is just touch the edge and sometimes get a little bit in the middle of the corners. If you can see on this one, I get a little bit of, I go straight around the edges, but in the middle of the sort of corner, sometimes I like to pull that color up. Um, and it really makes a big difference, I think. I don't know what you guys think. I'd like to know what you think. So I'm gonna be careful around the key. And just touch the edges with the palette knife. I can show you how I do it with my skewer too. Just stick the skewer in there and just sort of pull it along the edge and then just go from left to right. So it works either way. Anything, it's amazing the, the things that you can use in art. You don't have to necessarily have all the super expensive um, products or tools every time. I mean, sometimes it's important, but sometimes, let's see if you can see this, you can just use things you have around the house. I'm just adding a little bit more of the gold to it. Get a little bit on here. So. Looks great. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, so this looks like a pretty simple piece, but there's a lot of steps to it. You might not realize how much goes into it. And so, so now you know. And then one last step is, Lindsay, if you could hand me a Ziploc bag over there. Uh, I'll show you how I sign these pieces. It's very um, unmysterious. Just use a little Ziploc bag. I'll take um, a little bit of the paint I have going on here with the texture. And stick it in the corner of the bag. How long does it take to dry? Michaela was wondering. Oh, um, it will take about, I would give it a good three days. I wouldn't ship it for maybe a week if you're going to ship it, but I think three days you can put it under a fan and just make sure that it's fully dry. It'll be dry to the touch, you know, within, you know, 10 hours. But, um, but if you really want to make sure the deep layers are... So then I just got, I have a little bit of paint and actually I'm gonna put my glasses on here. Do a little signature on these little ones. I don't really wanna paint on the front, sign it on the front because it's such a small piece and I'm just trying to keep, I don't wanna make my signature part of the composition. And it's a nice thick uh, profile, so I, I do it on the side. And it's important to do it with the paint you were using because if you go try to go back and sign it, it's never going to look. You can see my signature on the side. And I customize these. Like sometimes when I do angels, I can customize. Show, grab one of those angels over there. I'll show them. Um, you know, I can put somebody's name on it if you want. Um, no, not that one. Just the, those little square ones. Um, people like that, you know, like having the ability to customize some of these because a lot of these are gifts people give. Here's a little angel I did over um, the holidays. And so for people that wanted to give these as gifts, well, I've got my, my name here, but I could customize it with the person's name or somebody that they want to remember. Um, so customization is a big thing. Oh yeah, here's another one. This one's green. This again has my name, but I could put somebody else's name on there. Um, okay, so this is the painting. Um, I'm gonna work on a card 
really quick, do a couple cards um, because I've got this paint here and this is really good um, paint. I don't want to waste it. So here is the one I did the background on. So let me do a heart. Um, and you know, I like having the texture on these cards as well. Um, it just makes it really special. And you see this one had a little gold on it already, but I don't mind. Just a little of that showing. This one is more of a gold heart. Let me just let me fix the if I'm gonna I think I better get rid of that but that's okay I can just add some paint to it as well let me get my brush everyone loves your angels oh thanks Thanks. And Kathy said she really loves your sunflowers as well. Oh, thanks. I just did that one last week. Where is that? This one. Um, yeah, so these can be little mini paintings. And let me bring up a little bit of this pink around it. And I, you know, I don't mind when you could call that a mistake if you want, but I don't mind incorporating some of this stuff. Do you ever have a hard time parting with your paintings? Yes, I do. <laughs> I get attached to them, which I remember hearing another artist talk about that. And um, I thought, how strange, you know, is that? But I do get attached to my art and um, of course I'm happy to sell it and I'm happy that a collector thought enough of it to include it in their home um, but I do get attached <laughs> it's a funny question uh, so let me let this one dry a little and let me see if I can do a couple more oh here's the sunflower Let's see, Lindsay's bringing me a sunflower to show it's you guys. My favorite. This is her favorite. It has kind of a cool um, frame. And I think we could all use some sun right now. I know I sure can. Oops, my palette knife broke. It's okay. Let me, um, let me get a rounded one, my more round one. Where's my round one? Okay. Um, again, just putting a little bit of the quinacridone pink on here, grabbing some of the thick, and then just laying that down. Oops. Get, get some of the quinacridone. Here's another card. You can see the texture on it. So pretty. Thanks. So that one doesn't have any background on it, um, which is fine. I think it's okay. I could probably put a little bit of almost like a watercolor wash Oops. on it. And then when these dry, I'm going to write love or 
whatever. Whatever I feel like writing. Thank you, Laura. Thanks for your comment. You love my work. I appreciate that. I love your work too. I've been watching your abstracts are gorgeous. So here's another one. So that is it for today. I don't know if anybody has any more questions, but I think I'm going to sign off. Um, let me know if um, if you guys enjoyed this. Just give me a thumbs up. Um, send me some hearts. Um, and I really appreciate you, you being in my group. And um, I'll be going live every week, every Sunday, maybe 10 o'clock a.m. It may be if that's a good time for people. Um, I'm going to be going live each week. So if you've got some ideas on what you'd like to see me paint, um, maybe some sunflowers. I did sunflowers last week. I'll take this off. Um, let's see if I can get this off of my... I did this one last week. Um, today I'm doing a heart. But if there's anything that you, in particular you'd like to see me paint, just put it in the group. I I'll probably do a poll maybe. Um, and let me know. So here, let me go back. So thanks everybody for being here and uh, let me know if you have any questions and have a great Valentine's Day. Bye.